Hey, it's Ben here, and here in this video, we're going to have a look at how we match fonts in Adobe Photoshop. So how we match a font from a design we've seen automatically in Photoshop. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just drag in an image that I've photographed, and we're going to match that font. So I've got a small booklet cover that I've photographed, and we're just going to rotate this. So I've got the top left here. We'll just rotate this round and hold down Shift to make sure that it rotates in increments of 90 degrees and we are going to be matching this little bit of text up at the top here. So I'm going to move this across the left. You can see I've already typed out the text here. And the way that this works is that we can select that type layer that we want to make the same as this font. And then we can use the match font function to match this layer of type. So my layer is selected. I'm going to come up to type and match font. And essentially here I've got this little moving selection area. I can position around this type and that is going to scan the font and find the one that is closest to the font that I'm selecting here. So you can see once I stop moving this around the match font function is going to search for this font and you can see here I've got a series of selections that I can scan. So basically these are fonts that are installed on my system so now I can just select through them and see which one matches it the best. So you can see this Apple Myungcho regular looks pretty good. The J is not quite the same. And the Century Gothic again is similar in the U's. I'm looking at the angle at the top of the U's there. We've got some similar cuts there. And then once we get into Baskerville, we've got some similarity, but we're losing some of the angles in those U's and that kind of stuff. So we don't have a specific font that is going to match perfectly there, but we're getting a good idea of that. Now we can also bring up some other options by checking this show fonts available to activate from Adobe fonts. If we check that, then it's going to show us some different fonts that we can activate. So you can see I've got some download options here. So I've got uh, old standard TT regular. If we hit the download button, then it's actually going to download that and it will move it up to this installed fonts and we can check and see if that is going to match a little bit better which it doesn't. The Century Regular is probably the closest at the moment, um, just due to the angles and kind of setup of some of these A's and P's. Um, but we're getting some different options there that we can then choose from. So you will get different selections depending on the area you select, and then also whether you have this option down at the bottom selected. So here you can see I've kind of focused in on the yaw there, and it's actually got Century Regular as my top choice there. I've got some others like Georgia Regular that we can have a look at and we can kind of then do a little bit of detective work and try and find out a font that is going to match a bit better. So we'll click OK to this. It's matched that font. Now I wanted to test this out a little bit more precisely by knowing the font I was scanning. So I went and photographed some pages from the Thinking with Type book by Ellen Lupton. I'll leave a link in the description below. So basically with these pages, we can actually see the names of the fonts that we are scanning. So I'm gonna drag some of these in now. So you can see, oh, I've put that behind there. We'll lift that up to the top. So you can see with these fonts, I've actually got specific font weights that I'm using. And so I'm gonna scan those and I've typed out that first little bit of that line of type from the book so we can see how well we're matching those fonts. So I'm gonna select this layer up at the top right here. So I select that type layer. I'm going to go to type and match font. And then we're going to make sure that this show fonts available is unchecked so that it scans more of the fonts on my computer. It seems to limit the scanning of fonts on your computer if you have that checked. So we'll now select this and you can see it takes a little bit of time, but we're finding Clarendon, a couple of different Clarendon options at the top there. So we're getting a pretty good selection of that font. So we can then just have a look at those top few fonts and see which one we think matches the best. So Clarendon Extra Wide Light is the best match and Clarendon Light is the, the font that we've actually got. So let's have a look at Gil Sons down here and see if it matches that. We'll focus in on that first line here, wait for it to scan and you can see pretty quickly it has grabbed Gil Sans are the top two options here. Now, a couple of tips if you are photographing a type, try and get as close in to the type as possible. You can get some mixed results depending on the size of the type. So we'll just click OK to this and just have a look at that. So if I 
come to my finder. We're going to drag in a couple of these, a couple of these bigger blocks of types. So I'll just drag this up to the top. So you can see I just photographed these large A's and we'll grab these ones too. So here we've got Clarendon again. I'm going to select my type and we'll just use the type match font and then we'll just focus in around the A's here and see how well it scans these bigger letters. So sometimes you'll find you know, you'll get a better scan if you actually photograph the type a bit better. So Clarendon wide regular, um, we don't have A and A in there, but if we look for a specific, just lowercase a, you can see it's matching pretty well. Um, this is a slightly heavier version of Clarendon, I think, um, but that might not be available on my computer. And you can see if we check the show fonts available, then it's gonna limit that scan a little bit on the computer show me a shorter list of fonts and actually it's suggesting I download this one from online and you can see that heavier A is looking a bit more like this A that we've got there. So again really easy to kind of download those fonts as you need them. So if we just bring that other layer up with Futura there let's just actually we'll make a new type layer We'll type in AA and we'll make this nice and big. So this is currently Clarendon extra wide. And with the type selected, if we go up to type and match font, it's not available. We do have to move back to the move tool to have that whole type layer selected before we can go ahead and use the find font or match font option. So we'll move this around Futura here. Let it scan, and you can see it's finding some different fonts here, not Futura. So I'm just going to uncheck the option here and see what different results I get. So you can see I've got Avenir and Saravic. Let's see how close those are. Not very close at all. And in particular, it's not getting that A. So I'm just actually going to focus in just on this A and see what different results we get. Yep, so we're not getting exactly the same fonts. We're getting this ITC avant-garde standard medium. The A is pretty close to Futura, and the A here is not quite the same. We're losing that kind of pointed top of the A there. So we may want to work with a larger set of type to make sure that we kind of get a good scan. So if we go back to the other layers that we had available, we have Futura down here. So we'll go to type and match font. So really just to show how you can get different results with this. So we've got this unchecked. We're scanning a longer piece of type there and this time it has found Futura. So you've got to make a judgment. I'm not sure why it couldn't find a Futura standard from the two A's, but you seem to get some mixed results depending upon what you're scanning. So obviously you want to photograph or scan your text so it's a bit larger, but also have a number of characters that it can then scan. So you can see as we move through these, we've got Helvetica here with this box unchecked. We are finding Helvetica there pretty well. Again, looking at things like the A here, we can see that this is the same font or pretty close to it. And again, then moving up here to Gil Sons, it is finding those different kind of variations of Gil Sons. Again, looking at things like the A and just trying to find an A somewhere in here, we can see we're getting that similar typeface there. So if you have any questions about searching for fonts, then do leave them in the comments below. The one thing I would say, this is a good starting point for searching for your fonts, but you're going to have to look for the specific letters and it's actually going to help teach you a little bit about the fonts that you're working with and how they're cut by looking more closely at those different typefaces as you try and match them if you need that for the design you're working with. So again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.